I said, Louie, come on, we'll have a cup of coffee, you know. He's got the money. So as he went in, one guy put his arm around him, Frank Bump and I put the rope on him, and we killed him. That was it. We choked him. There was about eight, eight, nine people there. Why were they there? Well, I don't know. They were there, you know, you know how they meet or something like that, and they heard that I was coming in with Rush and Louis, so they stayed. They were all members of our family, see. So they just stayed. They didn't have to be there. You know, it was just something that they happened to be there, and they just waited around, see. See, most people would prefer not to be around when they see someone being strangled. Well, not people in the family. <laughs> They're killers themselves, you know. So it didn't mean nothing. Kind of like, like a cabaret. Yeah, just like a little performance, see. Like a magician. Something disappears, then it comes back. <laughs> and in this case, nobody comes back? So. No, they don't come back, yeah. You yeah. know. The honor amongst the organized crime in the Italian families is tremendous. There is so much honor there that it's not like these fly-by-night organizations or the... There are other aspects of organized crime other than the Italian organized crime. But the Italian have the honor. The other people don't have any honor. Uh, for instance, an individual named Matty the Horse Zarella beat somebody out of money in a deal. And they put a contract out on him. The man was sitting in the car with him and his wife and his two kids. They did not shoot the wife or the children. They went up to the car and shot him three times in the head. This is honor. If you get another organization like the Blacks or, or the JDL, whoever it might be, they blow up the whole car with everybody in it. What did you feel about killing people? I mean, did, did... I don't know. It's hard for me to explain. I didn't have much feeling. Because, you know, I never killed nobody that was innocent. You know, they were all gangsters. You know, they're killers themselves. People that I fooled with, you know, guys that I fooled with were killers themselves. These are the men who lead the crime families of America. Tony Accardo and Joey Ayupa, joint bosses of Chicago. Joe Bonanno, founder boss of one of the New York families. And Carlos Marcello, boss of New Orleans. They like to portray themselves as respectable businessmen. These men could walk amongst you and you would never know who they were if you did not know them as the individuals that they were. But their reputations were far greater because of all the years of organizing their families, the, the tragic things that they have done to people and the people feared them. So they demand respect. Even though they don't go out today, and kill people. They would have somebody do it, but during the early years, you can believe that they've murdered people and cut them up and threw them to the fish and all that stuff. You could run into Carlo Gambino on the street when he was around and never know. He, he would fit in with anybody. You would never know this poor, meek, humble man was the boss of bosses and the boss of one of the biggest crime families in New York, or the biggest crime family. They might call him the old man because he was getting on in years, but he definitely dominated all the families. Nobody could get away with anything, which means if somebody came, tried to come in and take, take over some of his territory, they could never do it because of his powerful, he, big, big. It's unbelievable the, the size of his family and the power the man had accumulated during the years, not only on the streets, but with politicians and cops and all kinds of people that he had literally corrupted. Joey Cantalupo gave evidence against another New York crime boss, Funzi Thierry. Funzi Thierry is the, was the boss of the Genovese family. Now, this individual here is a meek and humble man. He is nothing to look at. He, uh, I wouldn't say, was more than five foot nine and weighed 140 pounds. A nothing man. 
I was partners with him in, in, a, in a business enterprise. And in my business enterprise was a member, a made member, a captain in the Genovese family who Funzi was the boss of. His name was Louis LaRocca. Now, Louis LaRocca is a monster of a man. He is a monster. He demands respect also because of his fine position in the Genovese family. He has his own crew. He answers only to Funzi Thierry. Now, in one situation, Louis LaRocca is six foot two, 280 pounds. He's a monster of a man. And there was a situation where we, we were behind in our rent in the flea market. And I ran into Funzi, and Funzi asked me, how are you doing in the flea market? And I said, well, Funzi, we're behind on the rent. Now, here's this little meek man saying to me, you tell that motherfucking Louie to go and get the money or I'm going to cut his balls off. This little nothing here. Telling this guy. And I go back to the flea market, and Louie says, did you see the old man? I says, yeah. He says, what did he say? Did you tell him we're behind on the rent? I, I was embarrassed to tell Louie what he said. He says, tell me what he said. And I tell Louie, the old man says, go get the money or he's going to cut your balls off. The guy must have got a diarrhea in his pants when I told him that. He was so scared that he ran out and got the $5,000. Now, does that show you the respect or the fear that they have for this, this man right here? And it's not only Louis LaRocca. It's everybody in the family. Angelo Bruno, the Philadelphia boss for more than 20 years in his own home movies, never before shown outside his family circle. Born in Sicily in 1910, Bruno fulfilled the American dream. He started with a grocery store and ended up a millionaire. In his private life, he was devoted to his wife and family. He prided himself on being a patriotic American. Bruno always looked more like a grandfather than a godfather. The image of a happy family man helped to further Bruno's reputation as the Gentle Don, a title he earned in 1959 when he refused to kill a rival who was plotting to kill him. South Philadelphia was Angelo Bruno's home territory. Most people in this Italian neighborhood have no connection with organized crime. But this is where most members of the Philadelphia crime family were reared. Mike Chitwood also grew up here and knows all the city's mobsters. But he joined the Philadelphia police and became its most decorated cop. You can't find anybody to say, to say a bad word about him in the neighborhoods. Angelo Bruno, you can never find anybody to say a bad word about him. Because they always were, quote, nice to the people. Somebody needed help, they couldn't pay their gas bill, electric bill, whatever, these guys would pick up the tab for them. And Bruno was always gentle, non-violent in his approach to whatever he did. And on March the 21st, 1980, as he pulled up to his house, it was about 9.50 p.m., and the assailant, in all probability, was hidden behind the truck. And as the power window was operated by the driver of the automobile, John Stanford, the assailant stepped from behind the parked automobile, put a shotgun, probably a sawed-off shotgun, to the back of his right ear, and blew Bruno away. The shooting was gangland style. Angelo Bruno was shot once in the back of the head at point blank range. It was a sudden death that left the reputed mob boss frozen, his mouth open as if to call for help, but no one would hear him. The horror of Angelo Bruno's murder outside his own home is remembered by his daughter, Jean. My father was left in that car for hours, and uh, people kept coming and coming. Finally, they the people in the street started shouting, take him away, take him away. And they took him away. And uh, I didn't show any emotion because if I did, maybe some people were glad that he was dead. Evidently, some people were, or they wouldn't have killed him. Who do you think killed your father? I can't say because I'm not positive. 
do you think it it was uh, people within your community, or do you think it was? You presumably don't think it was the police, do you? My father got to be too good for his own good. A new time was coming. A new time was coming. Um, people were into drugs. People were turned on by rock stars and things like that. The time was coming, and my father was against it when there was a need for drugs, unfortunately. And my father was against this. And a lot of people wanted to make money, most likely. And uh, they were dissatisfied because my father